I was watching I was watching this the other night. Um, well, I was uh, I I had a I had a bad I, I had a bad week or like a bad day really, and you know I was just I was kind of I was just not in the best mood, and I was not the nicest guy to be around. I was kind of a jerk, and I you know I was I felt I felt really bad about it, and you know my girlfriend, as sweet as she could be, and as as wonderful as she is, she goes, listen, I'm sorry you had a bad day. Why don't you take a bath, listen to some music, have a drink. I'm going to bed, and you should watch a wrestling match tonight. Before you go to bed, you should watch a wrestling match. And I said, okay, thank you for understanding. I love you. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then I super kicked her. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I, I could never do that. <laughs> Honestly, she pro- she, she's, she's pretty smart. She'd probably duck and super kick me. <laughs> um, no, so... So I I was watching this the other night, um, and this match always gives me goosebumps. I don't know. I I think uh, it might be my favorite WrestleMania match. Uh, it's it's The Rock versus Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. I mean that was a a long time coming. You know, that it, pretty much. It's amazing that it happened. The top of their each of their respective generations. You know, it, it's lucky that it happened because, you know, yeah. Hogan was, you know, older, obviously, at that point. You know, he could have easily been had a, a, an injury that ended his career like before that. So it's, you know, it's lucky that it happened. Um, and it's also surprising that they, you know, they each of them were able to put their egos to the side and kind of like put on a good match because like, you know, both of them were probably like, well, no, I want to win. I want to win. I, um, I don't there's, I think The Rock was a little. I think I think The Rock was just kind of more open to whatever. I think he was. I think having grown uh, grown up in the business and like understanding how, how Hulk Hogan was, he was probably like, all right. Like the original, his original thought was probably like, all right, he's probably going to have Hulk Hogan win. Like I don't care, whatever. It's an honor to share the ring with him because The Rock is a gracious guy. And yeah, but at that time The Rock was kind of. But The Rock was at his. Yeah. But The Rock was at his peak. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure he had an ego. Are yeah. you kidding me? He was at the, the the guy was at the top of his game. Why wouldn't you? And I mean, because you look you look at like that match between Shawn Michaels and Hogan, and like Hogan well, refused to do the job for, to Shawn Michaels. So well, Michaels they were also supposed. Damaged. Well, they were also supposed to have a trilogy. Yeah, they were supposed to have a trilogy, and Hogan was supposed to, and like I think Michaels was supposed to win the trilogy. Like Hogan was supposed to win the first one, and then Michaels was supposed to win the next two, and Hogan like he didn't want to lose to he didn't want to like lose the feud. He wanted to have the W over Shawn Michaels, so he like so he like made up a bunch of crap. He was like, "Oh, my back's hurting. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I can do this. Oh, I don't know. I might have to get surgery. I've got to check on this. I like I, I got to get it checked out. I don't think I can do the other two matches. I'm sorry, man." Uh, you know, thanks. And Shawn Michaels was like, "Oh, I see how it is." So he like completely sabotaged him in one of like the most, the worst selling in the world, just Pretty to make Hogan hilarious. look bad. Oh, it's one so of the most hilarious wrestling matches ever. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those things where you say, "This is what ha- this is, this is what this is the equivalence of of somebody rebel of, of like somebody rebelling when." Their parents tell them not that they can't have the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Like, this is essentially the kid going to the store and buying all of the cookies and then eating them in front of their parents. <laughs> While throwing dinner out the window. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Hogan and the... Yeah, I Hogan and the Rock, this was, uh, did, was not that. Instead... Mm-hmm. It's like the interesting thing is that Hogan is the heel the entire time. And I was explaining this to my girlfriend and I was like, the build of this match, you would not know who the bad, you would not know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that Hogan was the bad guy in this one. And she was like, well, what do you mean? I was like, okay, Hogan brought it, Hogan and his 
faction, the NWO, invaded re- invaded WWE. Vince McMahon sent them in to kill his creation, which mm-hmm. he may be doing right now in real in the real world in real time. Um, and they beat the tar out of all of the top good guys for weeks. And Hulk, and a, a couple of weeks before this, possibly even the week before this, Hulk Hogan beat the Rock so bad that he went to the that he had to go in an ambulance. And then Hogan took a Mack truck and he rammed it into the ambulance. Now the Rock did not die of his injuries or go to the hospital and stay there for two for at least a week. Instead, the Rock was back the next night. To have this cl- and he was able and he was somehow able to put on this clinic and she was like okay I she's like I understand not to question you but this is really something to question uh, logically and I was like don't do it you'll hurt yourself yeah. <laughs> don't ever try to question the logic of wrestling you will hurt yourself well you gotta just you have to see wrestlers as superheroes because that's essentially what they are uh, yeah essentially um, and like just this, this whole match is just incredible and they barely did anything. That's what it took away from me. I was like, this is so great. And the whole time they're just milking the crowd and they're reading the crowd. So like, and they switched cause they caught the energy and right before it, while energy, while everything in the, in the audience is palpitating and it's building and you can hear the crowd's excitement, they do nothing for the first like two minutes of the match, they just stare each other down and they're, mm-hmm. they don't even touch. And the minute that they lock up, they just do the standard test of strength, collar and elbow tie up. And the, yeah. and everyone is out of their chairs yeah. screaming. They, and I, and like, and then the, the rock starts working as a heel and they totally switch. They didn't do a double turn, but the fans turn Hogan babyface that night, and they turn the Rock heel just for the match. They, yeah. they were like, "We," they were just like, "We can't." They were like, "We love the Rock, but we can't cheer him. It's Hulk Hogan." Yeah. yeah. They were like, "We could cheer the Rock if he's fighting anyone else, but we can't cheer him against. We can't cheer him against Hulk Hogan. This could be Hulk Hogan's last match." And I think that's what it was being. What they were viewing it as is this is potentially his last match. Yeah. And they and they barely did anything. They barely did anything super physical at that like during the match at all. Mm-hmm. And well, it's I think that's, and yeah, you I don't have well. No, it wasn't even that. It had to be that. It was like I look at that and I say, this this is all you have to do. You don't right. have to. This is what wrestling could be. You don't have to. You don't have to do. You don't. It's, you don't have to do all of your moves to the other guy. You don't have to do each other's yes. finishes thirty different times and kick out of them twenty nine of them. You yeah. don't have to like get in. You don't have to throw in all the weapons. You don't have to do all the run ins. You don't have to do mm-hmm. all these super physical moves and three hundred backflips and mm-hmm. a freaking double elbow credenza or whatever it is. You don't have to do arm bars thirty six times. You don't have like you don't have to do you don't have to you don't have to do like a three hundred and five mile an hour stunt show a car slash car accident in order to get the audience pumped up. You can you have to just you if you can keep it as simple as you can do it. it just build all it is is just building and reading the crowd, yeah, and that's, that's what all I, that they that's did. What I mean by like if they did it as like this crazy spot fest and like weapons and all this. It would not have been that good of a match. No, we wouldn't be talking about it in this right. light. We would be saying, man, I wish they did something else. But right. they did. That match was as perfect as a match can possibly be. Mm-hmm. I think that might be... That's that, That's probably why this is my favorite WrestleMania match. And it's definitely one of my favorite matches of all time. Mm-hmm. Just and And it's also the story that they told was just the young lion versus the old lion and it was like is the is he going to is he going to take over the pride yeah like is he going to like or is the old one going to have one last fight in him and is he going to be able to subdue the young lion we don't know and it was just one of those it, there was magic that they caught in that moment that they will never replicate and i'm glad that it's 
I'm glad that it's immortalized on home video for everybody. Yeah. Or digital media device land for everyone. Unless the cockmasters find something yeah, yeah. wrong with it and shut it down. Well, I was going to say, the cockmasters are going to take it out because Hogan is, you know, like come out as like has said racial things racist things in the past so now the cockmasters can't have no, that on their network oh so hogan's god del- no hogan's deleted oh here we go but they'll then that would blur out they'll just blur out hogan It'll be like <laughs> the rock versus like a giant blur oh my god <laughs> i could I, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody like just did that as like a parody and they like uploaded it just as like <laughs> It's like, like the Rock versus Hogan Peacock edition. Yeah, it was like, oh, uh, was that the that the was it WWE Two K fifteen or sixteen where it had like the classic feuds thing where you could go back and re- and like so they had the Shawn Michaels versus Triple H like rivalry from like the Attitude Era up to the Ruthless Aggression Era. And it's like they just happened to skip over WrestleMania twenty. It's like. Yeah, so there was all these, like, matches that Shawn Michaels and, and Triple H had, this huge rivalry. Uh, and in 2004, they just, they kind of just, like, <laughs> they, they weren't there. And then they went back to it after that. Like, it's... Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't have, like, again, scene missing. You can't do that. Exactly. <laughs> How great would it have been if they just put that in, like, the game? If it just said WrestleMania 21, and then there was just, like, a thing that said scene missing. Yeah. Or it's, it, it, or it's like, they, they just, like, replace, like, Benoit with, like... It's, vacant. Like, generic, with the, No, vacant. It's, like, generic, yeah, or it's a generic, like, looking wrestler that yeah. says, like, the, the Crippler or something like that. <laughs> no, yeah, it, remember the Crippler? No, vacant. It's vacant's time to shine. Vacant. <laughs> Yeah, great match with Vacant. <laughs> yeah, Vacant put on a clinic. <laughs> I mean, there's not really enough respect for Vacant. No, I, I don't think anyone's... <laughs> Vacant's held every single title. Yeah. <laughs> in every single promotion. No one is as... There's no superstar as decorated as Vacant. In the history of, of professional wrestling. <laughs> yes. And Vacant is the oldest living wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> he wrestled in every era of wrestling. Yes. Vacant is... Va- WrestleMania may be the showcase of the Immortals, but Vacant is the Immortals. So <laughs> WrestleMania is a showcase of Vacant by that logic. <laughs> yeah. So it's... A, it's So WrestleMania, it's... It, it's a... It, it's a show about vacancies <laughs> and who will fill them from the time from uh, for the end of time. Also, The Rock versus Hulk Hogan is good, <laughs> but yeah, that match is um, th- that th- like everything is perfect about that match. Mm-hmm. Even like the e- e- well. Maybe not everything. The run-in with the NWO was like, eh, but the two of them work together to beat them, and that officially turns Hogan babyface. Mm-hmm. So while maybe that part they didn't quite need, it's it, it works with it. Well, I think Hogan kind of needed it to kind of be, go back into his old persona of, you know, uh, of like, you know, Hulk, you know, Hulk Hogan with the yellow and the red. Yeah. You know, the classic Hogan persona you know he kind of needed to like get break away from the nwo you know and and so he could drop the hollywood thing and go back to his classic well also i don't know if vince really had long-term plans with that and like kevin nash was injured anyway mm-hmm. like th- like the nwo in itself just kind of imploded because scott hall like relapsed and like got yeah. and like started drinking again and he didn't and he was like fired shortly after and then kevin nash like he like he tore his quad like walking across the ring because he stepped he just stepped wrong like Vince McMahon <laughs> yeah both quads to getting into the ring god yeah i mean it happens yeah it happens when you're like putting that much stress on your body and you're like working out and you know doing steroids back in the day maybe he wasn't doing steroids anymore at that time but like you know, he was 
in his late 30s, early 40s. He had probably he may have done steroids at one point in his time, possibly into those into that quad. So, you know, maybe he worked it out a little too hard that day, or maybe he tore. Maybe maybe the terrace had started from the workout, and I would imagine it, would it have just had to have started, and then he just kind of stepped wrong, and that stepping yeah. wrong just kind of like exasperated it and made it like tear off completely. Yeah. I mean, I would say if you're going to do if you're going to work out and you're a pro wrestler, you like on the days where you're going to be where it's like a taping day or if it's show day, I would imagine you do the light workout on that day. Yeah. Where that's really where like you're not really going hard, you're just doing a maintenance check that day mm-hmm. essentially. And then like the following day when you're like or like the following, you know, several days when you're not on TV, that's when you put in the work, the, the the big work, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Or maybe he was trying to do a catch up day. I don't know. There's a number of things that it could have been. Yeah, you know, or it just could have been his age. I don't know. It could have like been like he's that was developing over time. And then it just happened to like that was like the final straw, just the stepping weird. I mean, like how many times does you know you're walking down the street and you step weird and you roll your ankle or you friggin' like all of a sudden get a cramp that like you know I was like. I, the other night, I was stepping into the shower and my back just spasmed all of a sudden because the way I stepped, we, you know, I stepped weird, you know, like, and it took like ten minutes for the spasming to stop, you know. Yeah. Like, so it's it's you don't never you never know, you know, you just step weird and stretch something wrong and that's it. You know, George Soros used to base his investment decisions on his back spasms sometimes. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm I'm very I'm deadly serious. I um. Oh I think it's in I think it's in the book More Money Than God, which is about hedge funds and it's like the history of hedge funds basically. Yeah. And but and like I've also read this in an interview too, but like his son uh I forgot what his son's name is, um, George Soros, but his 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 other son that also has like another he has his own hedge fund he like they asked like somebody asked him like what the secret to his debt like what his dad's like what what his dad's success was to investing or like what he would like base his investment decisions on he's like he's like honestly i have no idea but if my dad made a decision it usually was a result of his back spasms wow that's <laughs> i don't know he, he must have been very super he must be very superstitious yeah or like it could be one of those things where like you know if somebody you know how when like somebody has like surgery um how like and so, like certain surgeries, they can tell if the weather's gonna like what the weather's gonna be mm-hmm. like, because like they yeah. get this like they either get like a chill or they get like a sensation that like that like in their in in the part of their body that had this surgery, where like it just it only does that just before it like rains or whatever like let's just say, mm-hmm. and then and like I guess it's one of those things where like if he had a back spasm like. Something like he just decided to like get rid of something, or like he decided to buy something, whether or not he had—I don't know. He, but his major things apparently happen as a result of back spasms. I don't know, but I mean, it could have been a number of reasons how and why he, you know, why Kevin Nash had like wrecked his quad. But I mean, we 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 do not know. Also, bef- like the year before that, like was when Vince bought WCW, and like they chose not to just go work for wwe right away yeah because like they had the guaranteed contract so they sat at home for a year and they collected like 500k or whatever it was like they collected stupid money just to sit home and um you know which ruined the invasion storyline but well but that's again that's another topic for another day Mm -hmm. and you know he either it could have been just rust he could have just been rusty and Like, his body going from, you know, not wrestling for a year to suddenly wrestling again, that's, like, a huge change for your conditioning. And, you know, his body may not have been able to handle, like, that, like, the work at so fast, like, so early on. So, I don't, I don't know. But, but, again, The Rock Hogan, perfect, perfect match. As simple as it could be. Gave everybody what they wanted. The Rock also, like, he celebrates a little bit because Hogan gives it to him. But then he's like, 
and he's like, no, this is your time, man. Like, go pose. The people came here. They want to see you pose. They want to see you do the big thing. They want to see you mm-hmm. celebrate. And Hogan's also, like, they're going back and forth where Hogan's like, yeah, but you won. Don't worry about it. I'm, you know, I'm old. They don't want to. He's like, oh, come on, just do it. Everybody wants to see this. Just do it. And, like, he did, so he poses and it's a big thing and it's great. But, he like, it's just so cool. Like, that match, there's, it's just, there's there's nothing else that I can say about it. It's, it's yeah. so cool and I'm glad that that, that it happened. I'm, but I, but still. To go back to what you said before of how, like, you know, The Rock, how, like, Hogan still could have been classic Hogan at that point, And he could have, you know, been politicking and doing all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why Stone Cold didn't want to do the match, because it was originally pitched as Stone Cold versus Hulk Hogan. And Austin didn't want to do it because he didn't feel comfortable with the finish because he didn't know what Hogan was going to do. So he had decided he like, he kind of just decided, no, there was like some kind of bad juju about this mentally. So I don't want to do the match. Yeah. So they gave it to the rock or maybe he even like suggested just give him to the, just, just if anyone's going to do the match, that's not me, then give it to the rock. It's either going to be me or Rocky. Give it to rock. Mm-hmm. And he had, and then Stone Cold went to have a match with Scott Hall that Stone Cold hated because I think Scott Hall was drunk during the match. Yeah, and you know it was it was a what it was what it was a ten minute match, boom boom stunner done nothing impactful, and mm-hmm. then the um, and and then the Rock and Hogan go on to put on the the perfect perfect match. I mean Stone Cold has said now, you know. Hindsight twenty hindsight being twenty twenty, the payday would have been great. I should have done it for the money, but I'm glad that. But then we wouldn't have gotten that match, and that match was better than anything I probably could have done. Yeah. 